Hello and welcome back. This week we're going to take a deep dive into the new selection and masking tools in Lightroom and Photoshop and to see whether they work and if they don't work as effectively as we want, what we can do about it. And finally we're going to have a quick look at one of the problems that's in the current version of Photoshop that prevents it working properly with Lightroom. So grab a cuppa and let's dive in. With the release of Photoshop and Lightroom 2022 version, there's been a big change in the selection and masking tools. And we're going to have a close look at both of these. And the first thing you will notice is that in the examples published with the software updates, they've all used very simple examples where it was clearly defined that the, that the um, thing that they selected stood out really easily from the background. And so we've got a couple of examples here that show you how simple it is to use it. Now, I've already created a mask here. I'll just delete all the masks and close that off and so when you get into the new version of Lightroom you'll see now that the selection tools have moved into this new panel and we now have this strange looking icon that actually is called the masking selections and now we have a whole lot of presets um, that allow you to make some simple selections the most obvious one is to use the select subject option and by clicking on that it will do some calculations in the background and make a selection of what it thinks is your subject. And you'll see here that it's highlighted the selection in red with a little icon here to show you that this is a subject selection, the little figure here. And you can see that mostly it's done a really good job. Um, there are a couple of areas where some of the hairs have been missed. And really to pick those up any better you need to go into Photoshop. But for basic adjustments in Lightroom this is probably more than adequate. So with that selection made, what do we do next? Well, we've got a selection active. We would go now into applying some adjustments. And let's just say we do a few simple things like adjust the exposure a little bit. Maybe I want to bring back those whites and highlights a little bit more. And certainly maybe add a little bit of contrast. And maybe even bump up the saturation a little bit. And you'll see here that all of those are working quite well. And despite the fact that a couple of the, those little areas have been missed, it's generally pretty effective. I probably wouldn't increase the exposure that much, but um, you can see there that that selection works pretty well. Okay, so let's have a look at another, another fairly simple option. Again, with a clearly defined subject, and I've already previously made a selection, so let's delete that again. And so we've got this, the dog with a clear separation from the background. And again, going into our selection tools, we can um, pick up the select subject and it works pretty well here as well. As you can see now it's highlighted our dog in red but if we hold down our space bar and click on the image to zoom in you'll see here there's a little bit of an area that for some reason has been missed. So the selection tool is not perfect, it's very good but it's not perfect. So what do we do now to try and include this because I want to make some adjustments just to the dog but I want that bit included. Well, what we've got here is we've got our mask number one and it's including a subject selection. You can see that this is the name of the overall mask and you can rename that if you like. And we have currently a, a subject selected in that. And to add to that, I just click on this button marked Add because I want to add to this selection. And to make it simple, I'm just going to use the brush tool and let's just hold down the space bar again so that we can click and zoom in to see what we're doing and now we will use our brush tool to fill in those areas where it was missed and so now with our mask number one we have two selections making up that mask we have the brush and the subject selection let's hold down the space bar click on it again to zoom out so you'll see now there are two icons here the subject selection icon and the brush icon and if I hover on those individually you'll see here the brush icon it's a bit hard to see behind the mouse but the brush shows where I've brushed in and in fact I might just move in there I've missed a little bit there it doesn't seem to have been picked up so let's just brush that a little bit more hover on the brush doesn't matter that I've overlapped with some of the others it'll pick that up and there's a little bit more that it didn't get and now we've got a pretty good selection hover on that again that's included and then we've got the dog as well so let's just spacebar click to move back out with those selections active I've now got the options to then 
adjust my settings whichever way I want to do it. I might want to add a little bit more texture there to bring out the fine details, a little bit of clarity perhaps and maybe just bump the saturation just a little bit. So that's all fine, we've got a selection active on the dog but what if I wanted to work on the background rather than the dog? Do I need to make another selection? Well no, we've already got a selection made we can simply duplicate this first mask by coming over here you'll see next to our mask number one if I click on that icon it closes up the sub masks that make that up but if I click on it again you'll see that it's got here the brush and the subject but if I come over here and click on this I can duplicate that mask so now I have um, what's called mask one copy which doesn't help me much but I'm going to invert this so let's just go to that now and we're not going to intersect it we're going to <clears throat> just go in simply with the mask one copy which I will rename all I need to do now with each of these selections is to invert the selection select invert the selection and what I should have but it doesn't seem to always work is that I want turn that back off now I have a selection that just includes the background but of course now it includes that brush as well so I need to go and invert that brush and hopefully now it works but of course it doesn't seem to always do what you would think it's going to do and so you have to play around a little bit to get it to work now we've got everything selected and it is a little bit um, confusing to get this to work but it will work eventually get our subject inverted and it seems to be a little bit fiddly in that it won't give you necessarily exactly what you want and I don't really want that um, brush selection because that's confusing things now I've got a selection of the background um, and it's pretty good so without having to go back and reselect everything with a little bit of playing around I think it's the sequence in which you apply those extra masks that it gets a bit confused but again having done that I can just say well I want to darken the background down a bit more and I want to take a bit of color out of it um, to just isolate the subject now I've done that a little bit more than I would normally do just to show the example but in these in instances the selection tools work pretty well although the in process of duplicating and inverting them can get a little bit tricky and you have to play around a little bit to get it to work and sometimes when you've got more than one mask that makes up a, a major mask the inversion process gets a bit confusing as I've shown so let's have a look at a little bit more of a tricky example okay we've had a look at a fairly easy example despite the fact that the duplication of the mask is a little bit fiddly and a little bit difficult to get to work let's have a look at one where it really is a bit of a problem in making a selection and we've used this example before of um, polar bears photographed against a fairly blank sky and this is where it got a little bit tricky so I'm just going to hide those couple of masks I'd previously made in fact what I'll do is I will delete them and we will start over let's just say now I mentioned before if we wanted to rename a mask click on this here rename and you get to call it something really creative other than mask one uh, we can call it bears and then we know what we're doing but in fact I'm going to delete that now so that we can start over and we've got no selections active on this at all now in this case the sky is pretty bland and I wanted to darken it down so going into our selection tools this time I'm going to use select the sky and let's see what happens when it tries to select the sky because here we have a subject and the background where there's very little contrast between them and you'll see here that it's not done a very good job we've picked up quite a lot of the edges of the bears and it's not worked hundred percent it's okay on these clearly defined lines but there's a bit of a problem so well we can go in and say all right well I want to subtract and let's see if it'll pick out my subject for me and see what happens if it then can intersect those two masks and give me a little bit of a better 
selection. Well, my subject selection also is not perfect because it's picked out some of the bears but not all of them. Hmm. So we're getting into a little bit of a problem. Now we've still got a mess with the sky. So what do we do now? Well, I think the subject selection is not going to help us any, so let's just delete that one and take us back to our sky selection. Well, I think here the only option that really for us to go with is to use our brush and to use the brush to remove some of that selection. The problem is that even with the brush tool, it's going to struggle to find the edge of the bear. And this is the sort of instance where the tools have reached their limitations. It's not quite going to work as effectively as we would like. And of course we've got a very soft edge here. This was photographed with a 600mm lens with a very shallow depth of field and the back edge of the bears has actually run out of focus. So we've got a little bit of a problem here. It's not really going to work that effectively um, to generate our mask and even if I make this bigger and brush in a little bit more aggressively it's still going to be a bit tedious in fact we could probably do this better in Photoshop so let's just take this one as being an example where it doesn't work terribly well and you will probably find some other ones like that now I have another example here um, which I called at the beauty salon photographed in the zoo at Singapore and I wanted to isolate the monkeys from the background. Now I made a selection here let's just see what it was. Well we had a, the original mask and then I had to do some fairly aggressive brushing in so let's just um, turn each of those ones off clicking on the eye icon so that the first thing that it selected when I tried to do the select subject was it selected the subject but it's also selected half of the background as well because there's not a clear line between the edge of the the baboons and the background and there's not enough contrast for it to select it so what I then had to do was do a, a another brush brush in to re remove that from the selection and again it wasn't perfect so I had to go again with another brush which was to remove or to add that to the selection because that wasn't included before. You can see that I've got a mixture of things. And then finally, we had to go into another one, turn that back on, another separate brush. So in the end, I ended up with a selection that was reasonably good. Whoops, let's just go back. Where are we? Mask one. But it took a little bit of doing to get there. And, in, and again, it's not perfect. So... In situations where you've got a really complicated selection that won't work in Lightroom, you're probably better off going into Photoshop. So before we jump into Photoshop, let's just have a look at one last example in Lightroom and then we'll move to Photoshop. But I don't want to emphasize the problems with uh, the selections in Lightroom because overall they work really well. So just before we move across to Photoshop, I'm just going to use another example here. Uh, of a, uh, a tree up at um, Cape Tribulation up in the Daintree rainforest area and here we had a fairly easy selection to make because using a selection of the sky it in fact did a really good job of picking out the details. Now if I come in close and you'll see here that even though I've just said select the sky it's managed to pick out the sky in between the parts of the of the leaves as well. So let's just pop back on that. You'll see here that in the middle section it's done a really good job and to do this selection previously it was quite a lot of work to do in Photoshop. So in a lot of cases where there's a clear contrast between the, f the subject and the background you've got a much better chance of making it work and of course you can use that to invert and to with a little bit of extra uh, brushing in um, when I inverted the sky it worked pretty well but it missed a little bit of the foreground but with a simple bit of brushing it worked really well so uh, the tools in Lightroom work really well in cases where there's a good contrast in other cases you really have to go to Photoshop so let's now take an example of the polar bears and let's move that across into Photoshop and see what we can do
So now I've got a fresh cup of coffee and we're now going to move across into Photoshop and see how this works. So selecting this particular image, let's open it in Photoshop, which I have already done. And let's see how the new tools in Photoshop work. Now this is Photoshop 2022 and the new selection tools may not be immediately obvious. It is hidden behind the quick selection tool and if you any of these tools that have a little triangle in the corner that indicates that there are sub tools hidden below that. So if we go to the quick selection tool click and hold it will pop out with a couple of other options. What we want is the object selection tool and that will allow us to select objects but with version 2022 we have a new tool which is called the object finder and if you tick this box and click on the little turning wheel it will go and try and find the objects in the image for us. Now this does an incredible job if you move your mouse over and hover on different aspects of the image hmm, can't find any objects here but it's done a pretty good job of finding our polar bears despite the fact that that edge as we saw previously was pretty ill-defined. So let's just how do we make a selection now that we can hover and we get this blue overlay that's all very well but how do we make a selection from that? Okay well let's move on to the first part click on that to engage the selection and then as we move away you'll see that there's a selection over part of that. If I click again to add to that selection it's now added to the selection and if I move my mouse away you'll see that now it's added to those selections and it's done a really good job overall but again let's just leave that selection active and get rid of that tool otherwise it's going to confuse us but you'll see here there are a couple of bits where it's not perfect but by and large I think it's done a better job than Lightroom is capable of doing and so let's see what happens let's just leave that selection as it is and let's just use that to um, do something such as let's just use the curves tool to really darken that and see what's affected it. Well for a start we've got a pretty hard edge on the selection so that's not really going to work for most situations and you'll see here where it didn't do a particularly good job so let's just um, go back click on that selection and let's just say add mask to selection so that we reselect that um, we've now got the selection back. Now what you should always do in Photoshop of course is when you make a selection that you want to be able to use again you should always go up to the select menu and save the selection but in this instance I'm not quite finished yet so I want to make a few adjustments to this selection but anyway let's let's save it in the first instance and let's say well let's be creative and call it bears again when I can spell it correctly and will save that selection so that we can always go back and pick that up again. So now with this selection active I want to do a little bit of a refinement here so rather than the object selection tool I want the quick selection tool and in this instance I want to remove from the selection so I go up here and select the brush with the minus symbol against it and making sure that I've got a very small brush because the larger the brush when you're using the quick selection tool the larger the tonal range that it's working with so keeping the brush very small I can come in and I can just brush around those areas where it's not been 100% perfect um, in fact I would probably shouldn't have done that so I'll go back and go to the plus tool and just tweak that a little bit around there um, and I think that was my main area of concern where it got a little bit hairy so to speak and what about here where I've got some very fine hairs on the edge of the bear? Well, of course, with these tools selected, I can always go in and, sorry, make sure I'm working on my base layer, otherwise I can't go and refine it. But I can go and use the Select and Mask tools to then refine that edge. Now, there's a built-in preset for refining hair, and that works pretty well. And again, we can go around the edge and just refine those hairs with that base selection made. Now bearing in mind that this was a selection that was fairly difficult to do I won't spend the time in going around all the way around the edge of this but it will pick up those fine hairs given enough care and attention. So that's worked pretty well. Let's assume that I've done all the way around the bears. I've now got a selection that's working really well and I would then with that selection refined I would go back in and resave that selection. save 
I don't want a new channel. I want to replace. I've already got one called the Bears. I want to replace that. So I selected the one I already made and make sure it replaces it. And there we go. And one other thing that I would probably do here if I wanted to make this really work well would be to go into my Select Tools, come down to Modify, and then Feather it. And maybe as little as three or four pixels. Let's say five pixels. And we've just got a softer edge there so that if I now go in and apply that selection, let's just go back in and save it again to make sure that we have our updated selection. It's not a new channel, it's the old one. It'll always come in and offer to save it as a new channel, but where we want to replace it, we've done that. And now what I'll do is I'll, I'll go in and make a new curves adjustment layer. That's the old one we tried before. We'll get rid of that. Now with my new selection, let's just see what happens. You'll see that now I've got a much better edge and it's, uh, and it's picked up quite clearly here, the fine hairs on the edge of the bear. And even in the areas where it's a very ill-defined edge, such as along the shoulder here, it's done a pretty good job. So that in some instances, Lightroom isn't going to be able to do it for you. You need to go into Photoshop. Its tools are a little more powerful, but of course we're getting into a more powerful piece of software. So given that that works pretty well, we've got a couple of other options in Photoshop that we can use to refine that. So let's just go and turn that layer off for the minute, go back with our selection, and this time I'm going to load the selection that I've saved, and it's the one I called Bears. And if I wanted to really refine this a little more, it's a little difficult to see with the marching ants on the overlay, but there's another way that we can see quite clearly the extent of the mask, and that is to use the Quick Mask Overlay, which is this little tool hidden below our black and white palette, foreground and background colours. We click on this little Quick Mask Overlay, you can really see here where the edges of the mask are, and you'll see here that a couple of places where the mask is a little bit harsh edged, and to refine this we've got the magic of the brush tool where we can use black or white to paint onto or remove from this mask and this is a really clear way to see where the edges need to be refined. Now invariably I get this wrong, painting with white onto the area that's already selected will remove parts of it and of course if we're using a soft edge brush we're automatically feathering our selection. So in areas where it really doesn't work terribly well we can use our brush tool to really refine those select areas. And you'll see here that because I feathered that mask, I've got a pretty good soft edge all the way around the important areas. Not quite perfect there, but plenty good enough for most of what we want. So that's a really good way to refine our mask. Let's just go in here and say, well, that didn't get quite right there. Now I want to swap what I'm, I want to paint more red, which is to remo remove from the selection. So if I use the X key on the keyboard, it swaps my paint colour from white to black and I can just carefully paint that in and pick up that little refinement. And of course this one was quite soft so it doesn't really need to be a really hard edged mask. So when we're finished playing with that, click the quick mask overlay again to remove it. We've got our selection active again and guess what? We're going to go back in and save that selection and overwrite the old selection because we've now refined it even more and we've got a much better selection. So Photoshop gives us a lot more power to really refine carefully the selections but Lightroom will get you most of the way with most subjects. The tricky ones we're going to need to go into Photoshop. So what have we learned today? We've learned that the new selection tools in both Lightroom and Photoshop are vastly improved from the previous versions. And in looking at the selection tools from within Lightroom, I've really only covered the very basics. There's a lot more sophisticated operations there behind the scenes that will allow you to do some really good selections. But just bearing in mind that not in all cases is it going to be perfect and you may have to go to Photoshop for some of those really tricky ones. So going back to Photoshop, we've got our selections here and they're saved along with the image file.
and back in Lightroom the way it works now with the new format of the catalogue when you make these selections these are also saved along with the catalogue information so that whenever you go back into one of these images where you've created a mask it'll always be there for you to work on. Now the last thing I wanted to mention is a really fundamental problem that's happened in the last couple of versions of Photoshop and I believe it's a problem with Photoshop and not with Lightroom and that is there's a fundamental issue that we used to rely upon in working from images going from Lightroom to Photoshop and back. So let's use this example. The polar bear was photographed and the image was stored in a particular folder in my catalogue. And we opened that image from Lightroom into Photoshop and did some work on it. So let's say now that I wanted to save that image. Now in the older versions of Photoshop Photoshop knew where the image came from and by default when you went to file save it would take you back to the folder. Now unfortunately it's just saved it somewhere I don't know where it's gone. Let's go back in and say file save as and that's not the folder that it came from. That happens to be the folder that I was last working on the last time I used Photoshop. So let's just close out of that let's go back to Lightroom and let's try another one. So um, let's head the polar bears were on it from a different um, trip. Let's go back and pick up the tree from the day tree, um, the raw file. Let's open that in Photoshop and it will turn away in the background and open into Photoshop. takes a few seconds to open the file and here we are. Okay so now I want to save this. This was taken on a different trip and is stored in a different folder. Let's go file save as and where is it going? It's going back into the wrong folder again. Now this is a problem that's occurred in the last couple of versions of Photoshop and if you regularly work from different folders and rely on Photoshop and Lightroom talking to each other to resave the files back into their original file locations you're going to get yourself into all sorts of trouble and to compound things when you were working in Lightroom and if you were working in a collection let's say let's just go back in here I've got a collection that I put images into for this Lightroom masking video if I opened the file from a collection and then saved it back as a Photoshop file it was automatically added to the collection now it doesn't do that either and I've been onto Adobe a couple of times, spent a lot of time trying to get this resolved and the only solution they've come up with so far is to revert back to an older version of Photoshop which I think was 22.1 where it still worked but unfortunately then you don't have access to all these new tools so it's a real problem Adobe I hope are working on a fix for it but just bear that in mind if you upgrade to the latest version of Photoshop um, it has lost that communication with Lightroom and it's something that really affects a lot of people who regularly work from different files and different locations and if you don't pick this up you're likely to save files back into locations that were not the original source and then when you go looking for the file it hasn't appeared back in your Lightroom catalogue um, you would regularly expect it to appear alongside the original raw file for instance this is the raw file this is the Photoshop file they would automatically appear together in the correct folder and in the collection. But at the moment that functionality is broken and I hope that Adobe are working on it to fix it because it really is an important feature that should have been kept working and currently isn't. So in future videos we'll have a look at some other features that um, have come along and in the next one I've got something really interesting to have a look at so please come back soon and um, I hope this has been useful for you. Thanks for watching.